Jeff, let me start with you. So a patient is referred to you from the surgeon with stage 3 disease. Lymph nodes were positive, had a completion lymph node dissection. What are the options for that patient? Well, you know, at, at this point in time, certainly the, the standard or a standard uh, option is, uh, is alpha interferon, either pegylated or uh, uh, the, the standard alpha interferon that's, that's given more frequently. Um, I think there, there's fairly good data, mostly if you look at the meta-analysis, that there is a survival benefit. There's excellent data that there's a disease-free survival benefit, but I think there's some question whether that disease-free survival benefit is of significance enough to put patients through therapy from anywhere from one year to, to uh, two years or even longer. Um, I think both of those options, pegylated and alpha-2b, are, are reasonable approaches. But even in the most optimistic perspective, the, the benefit is modest at best, probably 10 percent uh, uh, um, relative, not absolute. So certainly I uh, tend to, to use it in patients who can't go on clinical trials, which I'll, I'll mention in a minute, and, uh, and those who, who are of higher risk. And, and you can debate whether that's the right group of patients, whether the 3B and the 3C are more appropriate. But my logic is that they have a much greater chance of recurrence, so that relative 10% is more meaningful, and they have such a low percentage of uh, survival. I think the other options are clinical trials that are ongoing, and right now, we all know there's trials looking for at the BRAF population, the BRAF V600 mutant population, and looking to see if, uh, uh, if either the use of BRAF inhibitor or BRAF plus MEK inhibitor is better than a placebo control. And we also are very soon going to complete the accrual to a trial looking at interferon versus uh, ipilimumab or uh, Yervoy, which uh, will be a very important trial and has looked at actually two doses of the ipilimumab. I think we're all anxiously anticipating, and we do know that at this meeting there is going to be, and there is some data available in terms of the ERTC study. Now this study compared 10 milligrams, not the standard 3 milligrams per kilogram uh, IV dose of uh, ipilimumab. And this study did show a positive, uh, its endpoint was met. There was an improvement in progression-free survival and that hazard ratio for that improvement was somewhere between 0.6 and 0.7, I believe. Um, and that, tra uh, that translated into about a 10% three-year survival benefit, um, I believe from 42 to, uh, from 32 to 42 percent, three-year disease-free survival. The problem with the study is there was quite a bit of toxicity, um, uh, a very high incidence of hypophysitis and a much higher incidence of colitis than you see in the metastatic setting. And those, we all know, can, be, uh, can lead to quite a bit of morbidity and even, in rare cases, mortality. So I think, I think that trial is certainly an important trial. I think we, we don't have all the answers whether this will tra translate into a survival benefit. And certainly the dose is problematic since that is not the approved dose in the United States. And as if you compute the cost of it, it would be quite astronomical if that was used in the adjuvant setting. So I think we're excited at least we have a hint, uh, maybe certainly more than a hint, that. Uh, that checkpoint inhibitors may work in this setting, and I think we're all really anxious to see if, uh, if other better checkpoint inhibitors, which we now likely have, will have a much greater impact.